Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and as I said yesterday I've got all of my November 11 which is like the Black Friday of AliExpress all of my hauls in so I've got loads of packages of different things from stamps to dyes to stencils and what I've decided to do is break them down over the next three days up to Friday and today I'm going to do stencils and a couple of smaller things so <laughs> you can see I've just got loads of packages so stencils today and I'm going to colour them in so I'm going to get my stencil brushes which is something hang on just a second <laughs> which is something that um, I got this year and I really, really love them. So you can see the stencils that I've got here. So we're going to go through these today. We're going to see what they look like and how they work. And I'm just going to move this big pile over with my other pile. Sorry if I'm going off camera. And I have cut up some cardstock. Sorry for that shaky on the camera. Um, so we're going to look at these stencils and do these stencils in a second. But I did get myself some magnets. Now, they're tiny and you get 10 for a couple of bucks. And I don't want to send my camera funny, so I'm not going to put them too close to the camera. But if I put my finger there, you can see how small they are. So that's 10 little magnets. And what I use these for is the closures on little purses or for doing journal ties. If you want to use a nice piece of ribbon and uh, put a couple of these or even a piece. You can actually get your... Um, jewelry snips and cut a little piece of you know paper clip the curved bit if you want to bury that underneath your cardstock so that you don't have to use two magnets because as you can see you know a magnet will stick to a dollar tree paper clip so you can just cut off a little piece of that and bury it and then you've only got to use one magnet because I do know some people will use two magnets and you don't really need to do that. So you can save money just by snipping off a little bit there of a paper clip. So I got 10 of those. Right, I'm moving those over so I don't lose them. And from eBay, which is totally going off on a tangent, I managed to get myself a lovely punch, which is this one. And it cuts a scallop banner. I really like this. I've forgotten who actually does it. Oh, I'm trying to think of the name. It'll probably come back to me at the end. Because Jenny Bowling, that's it. It's a Jenny Bowling punch. And like I say, I do apologise for the light. But I think it was $9.99, which is not bad really for an easy squeezy punch. Because quite literally all you do is pull the handles and it doesn't hurt your hands at all. So I did treat myself to that. And what else have I got? Oh yeah, I'm going to show you these. These are no longer available. But first of all, I got a free gift of some pumpkins, which was rather nice of them. And I will take it out of the bag and uh, show you that. So that was my little free gift, which is really cute. And I love the little quote on top of that one. So I will use those next year. And I got a rather large Happy Halloween. So you can see how long it took <laughs> for these to get here. I got a Merry Christmas, which of course can still be used. And I got a Let It Snow, which is rather large. You can't get these. I have searched. If I find them, um, well, you know, while I'm uploading this video, then I'll link them below with all the other stuff. But I just couldn't see them. And thanks so much. And I'm always putting my daily hot picks because um, they're things that, you know, I'm going to buy or they're in my basket and I'm going to check out on them eventually. And this was one of those that was in my daily hot picks and there was only ever a few available and these are all sold out. I don't know whether the seller is going to bring them back or not, but I just saw it and thought it was really, really lovely. It reminds me of a vintage style configuration box, you know, the layout. So 
you can actually cut that in several layers of foam and give it some really lovely dimension but I just did it in vintage brown so you could see what it looked like inked over so if you spot it yourself um, you know I'll try and get close there you can basically see what it looks like but such a lovely frame but it's just not there anymore so sorry about that right so now I've said sorry and shown you a few things that you can't get I will share my stencils and hopefully these are still available by the time I've uploaded this and uh, tried to link everything so first up I'm going to squirt my mat with some water because even though you think your mat's clean, uh, sometimes it just isn't. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So I'm going to get the stencils out. And uh, I don't really want to be picking up something that I shouldn't. Uh, here's the thing you see with pink, pink and yellow inks. They always stain everything. And uh, it never comes back clean again. Not really. So there was quite a little bit of glitter that I had on that mat and um, some of that walnut stain from doing that frame. So you can see my mat was not particularly clean. Right, that's gone. And I've got my cardstock. So I've got quite a few sheets of cardstock here for testing. And I think first up, I'm going to go with, let's do the Christmas ornaments. This is a double set. So you're getting the ornament shape and then you're getting a layer that you can put um, a pattern on the top. And this is what they look like. These are, I believe, a five inch square. And I can't find my ruler because my hubby borrowed it. So... <laughs> I'm either going to find him and tell him off or I'm going to go and find the ruler. But I'm pretty sure this is a five inch square. So anyway, what you're supposed to do is stencil your outline. And then when you've done that, you lay your design over the top. So I think I'm just going to go with a round one for the moment and uh, leave a bit of space because there is a little hanger. And I'm going to grab my basket and I've got loads of brightly coloured inks in here which I really love to use with stencils and I think I'm just going to go with, uh, ooh, I need to go with a paler background don't I? So I'm going to go with a twisted citron and then I might go with that uh, villainous potion on top. So I'm going lime green and purple. So that, that should be exciting. Right, so these stencil brushes, these are gorgeous. I don't wash them. I just keep using them over and over. And if they change colour while I'm using them, I don't really care. Right, so I've got my limey green. I'm putting plenty on. I want a good dense coverage and I'm doing the round one. So I'm just going to swoosh it around. Just go backwards and forwards. This does not have to hurt your hands at all. I just love it. Right, so you can see I've got my, my limey, slimy, twisted citron down there. And I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to try not to move the stencil. And then we're going to go villainous potion over the top. And I haven't got a clue what that's going to look like, to be honest. And uh, I don't know if I've actually got a purpley looking brush in my basket. And if not, I'll just go with a paler one. Because that's probably the best thing to do. So that looks like it's had some pinky or something on it. So I'm trying to think, which one should we use? Should we go stripes or should we go dots? Or should we go lopsidey stripe? Let's do that one. Right, I'm just going to put that there. So now you can see we've got one stencil on top of the other. Because they are layering stencils. And I've just put Villainous Potion on. I'm going to hold that down. And I'm just going to go swirly twirly all the way through. I'm going to do the hanger part as well. I just think that's going to make life easier. And then we'll see what we've got when we lift it up. 
and all the other shapes work in exactly the same way so there is our ornament I really like that actually now on the ornament section you've got a little hanger I don't know if I left enough space for that I'm going to move my basket out of the way and I'm just going to put that little tiny piece and I think that's in the centre so I'm going to have my little hanger up there I'm just going to go round and round so there's my little hanger <laughs> it looks a bit Halloween-y but at least the stencils work and that's the important thing so if I drop that one down slightly there is less ink on it now which means you can start to play around and if my light's coming in from this direction then I'm just going to do swirly twirlies lots of times around on this side and uh, basically use up a lot of ink and get a light spot going there so you don't have to use the pattern bits with them so there's that one which is rather pretty in purple if you like to have a purple Christmas tree but I'm going to switch back to my limey slimy and I'm going to do the other drop and see what kind of ink I can get coming off here so I'm just going lightly over it and then putting more pressure onto this side to make it a lot darker and I will hold that up for the camera because my lighting is atrocious looks almost like a lemon lime doesn't it I really like that really soft and subtle that one extremely gothic yeah I could actually put a little black cat's face or something on there and have it for Halloween but I like those I think they're really cute and they're going to need washing now but at least we know that those work and this is the point of my videos this week and I'm going to go into this one because it's quite an intricate and delicate one and I'm looking at my clock of course and <laughs> we're already into 12 minutes and uh, I'm always conscious of not taking up your time so I'm going to go purple again and just because there's only a little bit of ink left on here it's going to be a very soft blend so I'm just going to do the border around the edge for the purple and then because I know I've got some lime still left on here I'll do an inner bit too I mean these stencils are lovely and thick you know they're not those cheap flimsy nasty things and then this one's got yellow on but I don't know if that's going to show up much well, maybe it will and of course things like this are great for getting your pen and inking in between to start picking bits out but there's that one and that looks pretty as well so I'll hold that one up really nice pretty background really like that so we know that that one works and you can look at that because usually um, on some stencils you'll find that the bits and strands in between can be so fine that they tear but it's just really really you know I'll twang it for you nice and thick now I've got a star stencil here and I've got a tree stencil I think we should do the tree so I think the tree deserves a piece of paper all on its own so I'm going to alter the direction I'm going to go long ways I've got to move my bottle don't you just love it when I'm organized <laughs> I'd probably scare myself if I ever got organised. Yeah. <laughs> I just like to go on a treasure hunt for everything. That's my excuse. Right, these are birch trees. Right, so larger than the piece of paper that I've actually got here. And I'm trying to think, well, ooh, I've got one that looks a bit grey, grey and dingy already. I'll see what's left on that. And uh, let's have a look at what these birch trees look like. Oh, there's actually loads on that. Oh, that's quite a surprise, actually. I was thinking I was going to get a nice subtle birch tree. Obviously not. Now, this has got to be weathered wood because my weathered wood oxide ink um, is constantly separating. It separates the solid, which is like chalky, from the liquid, which is like a clear grey ink that 
just continually floats to the surface and I don't know whether it's humidity or heat or whatever's caused it but it's the only ink pad that it has happened to so you know it's kind of weird and I think I've got enough space to be inking that one so of course a stencil like this is perfect as a background if you like to collage um, if you're cutting a little girl out of a magazine maybe even a little red riding hood and a little wolf you know coming out from behind the tree or something and of course cute critters for winter whether you've got your little squirrels and your hedgehogs and your little foxes and stuff uh, and of course your deer now I don't know what my ink's going to look like because as I say it keeps separating but there you can see the birch trees and they are huge I mean this is a 10 inch wide sheet of paper so you can see it's um, probably a 12 inch long stencil that one so I really like that but you get different shades and then when you've done it you can you know you can softly go in and cast shadow between the branches I just love these brushes right so that is that one and we're at 16 minutes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause at 20 and then just show you the other ones because I know they're going to work so I've got a couple of packs of candy canes here and they're sort of like they're different like these are more single and those are sort of like heart shaped candy canes so what I'll do is I'll go with the heart shaped ones I think because I have got my um, candy apple ink here and I'm trying to look for a red brush red brush no oh I think I'll use this one then right so candy apple for the candy canes and I'm just you know picking the ink up swirly twirly as you go and I've got that down just holding it down with my hands and I'm just going to go in of course stencil like this brilliant for a background for Christmas and I have to use it because it's going to be Christmas day soon so I think I've done quite a few candy canes there with that bit of ink that I've got on my brush make sure that I've covered them so if there is any errors it's mine it's not the stencil because the stencil's completely um covered right so let's have a look because this is like for a slimline dye i would say so there's our candy canes in heart shapes i like that look at the state of my stencil <laughs> So I need to uh, to wash those, but you can have, have a look at a neat one. There you go. That one had a bit more ink on it, I think. And isn't it weird how my candy apple looks almost like a sort of burnt orange, doesn't it? Right, so we are approaching 20 minutes, yes. And I'm just going to put these back down, what I've just done. Really love that Christmas ornament one really effective and love the tree so these are my stencils you've seen the ones that I've just dirtied up I've got a tulips and I've got a daisy one I've got a star shaped one which is really great I've got a large wreath which I absolutely love because using those brushes you can go in with all your different colours and then I've got this lovely, lovely one, which I'll turn the right way around. So you get a grid, plain grid, and then you get different shapes that you can insert into the grid. So I really like that. So you can insert snowflakes if you want to, or if it's Valentine's Day, you can put hearts and stars. You've got a Christmas tree and you've got joy, but you don't have to add those elements. You can just use the grid and whichever bits you want. 
and then I've got a very large wavy one. Now this one for me is brilliant because as you know I do like to stamp journal pages and things like that and I would colour this with nice bright bold inks, leave the stencil down and then I would stamp through elements of it so that when you lift it up you know you've got that broken white line between the stamping so that's also another slimline size one which is probably nine inches I would say right so that was my little stencil share and tomorrow I think we should do some stamps and colouring because I've got lots and lots of stamps thank you so much for watching have an absolutely awesome day and if they're there all links will be below bye <laughs>